Hey everybody, welcome back to my layout. This video will be a layout update for June 2017. Got quite a bit of stuff to show you guys. A couple new locomotives, some good progress on the layout, and the very first train that uh, we ran down here. So let's get started. So first thing, obviously I had this, uh, we celebrated a milestone here last month. We had the very first train down here. This was just a work train that I've been using to help me lay the track so it kind of follows me around and throw the extra ties and cut off pieces of rail and stuff in there. So that was pretty cool. Uh, finally got the, I mean it's nothing's permanent, it's just the uh, my booster with alligator clips hooked up to the track for now but it was the actual first train on the bench work down here so that's a really big milestone. It's been a long time coming. Almost a year uh, before to get to this point so that's pretty awesome. So the major progress on the layout, I spent pretty much all of my time this last month working on this. This is the CP Points West reverse loop and all the tracks completely laid on it and the turnout. So that's a major piece of the of the railroad done. This is uh takes a lot of hours to uh to do these reverse loops. It's a there's a lot of track. It's all Atlas Code 100 and there's about 135 feet of flex track in there, 45 pieces. So it took quite a bit of time. I used silicone to uh, secure it down to the cork roadbed. I didn't shoot any video footage kind of during construction, but I took quite a few pictures. So I'll uh, just do a quick little slideshow here and show you kind of some of the progression and how I went about uh, gluing these tracks down. So you see, I used weights to hold it in place and clamps. I was using tacks, but because I have the 3mm rubber underneath the cork, I was finding the tacks were kind of pulling up through it, and I was worried that I was going to mess up the glue bond between the either the cork and the rubber or the rubber and the wood. So I found it just worked better for me weighing down the piece, and that way you get a nice even um, kind of pressure along the whole piece of the track. I think I could have been a, done a better job of laying the track. Some of them are a little bit kind of wavy. I did my best to keep the, the curves kind of as flowing as possible. But it's tough kind of eyeballing it and you know you can only do four or five pieces at a time as it would have had about enough weights for. So. so I used the Atlas joiners and I left like half a millimeter gaps in every piece of flex track. My thought process behind that is uh, it's it's a really cool down here in this basement. It's always around 17 degrees, sometimes cooler in the winter. And I think if I ever get the in-floor heat hooked up, it might change how warm it is down here. So I figured I should leave a little bit of space if uh, if the way the temperature is going to go in the future will be up. So there's a half a mil gap, which is it looks like quite a bit in this shot, but it's actually you can barely notice it in between the, each piece of flex track so hopefully that's enough uh, space among the whole thing that I'll never get any any kinks or anything like that from it, the rail expanding so here's the ladder tracks uh, entering to the staging yard eight turnouts in total and like I talked about before in the last video I used the PC board ties only on the fast tracks turnouts and they are half a millimeter lower than Atlas flex track. 
So to bring the turnouts up to the right height, I had to put this uh, just five or half a millimeter styrene underneath the fast tracks turnouts just to even out the uh, the rail between the two different types of track. So this is code 83 microengineering rail, and it's attached to the Atlas code 100. So that makes up for that difference in height. One little tip for anybody if you're gonna go about using these fast tracks turnouts. If you want to stretch the budget a little further, these are the frets that the PC board ties come in and they're copper plated too so I actually used them I made some t ties out of those frets to kind of fill in the gaps between the turnouts partially because I made a mistake um, I didn't realize when I was building these turnouts how long they should be so I just built, built them as short as I thought they could be to save rail and everything. Well, it turns out in my design I was using full length fast tracks turnouts um, to plan the whole staging yard. So what that did was uh, if I would have used minimum length number sixes, it would have screwed up how the, how the tracks all entered the yard. So it wasn't a big deal. I just had to uh, add some of these PC board frets in there. And they're all soldered too, so this is all soldered together one big piece now. And I used an MRA gauge to gauge the track properly in between the fast track external. So this should be a really solid, resilient piece of uh, track work here. And I have some tortoise motors, so the next thing I'm going to do is uh, install the, the tortoise motors for all these turnouts. So it'll be eight in total, they'll all be switched. And I'm going to use. Uh, Fish Plate Films has a great video, Greg there from Down Under. He has a great video about uh, doing reverse loops for a balloon tracks like this. So it's going to be uh, and a Digitrax AR1 probably on these uh, that will power each individual staging track. And then he used the tortoise switch machine to power the, the isolated frogs on these. So should be uh, pretty rock solid once I get those tortoise switch motors on there. So the other thing I've been spending time on is building more fast tracks turnouts. So I got a few more built here. These will be for the CN future loop that will go on top of the CP one here on those like stacked on top of those uh, shelf hangers there. So I think I've got 17 made now, and I'm just running out of. I think I have PC board ties for. I think I have enough to do two more. So I need 25 in total, so I'll probably have to order some more PC board ties. But uh, the fact that I was able to make the turnouts quite short on the CP side um, gave me a lot of extra rail. And uh, there's some few ways that you can make stretch the materials out on the uh, on these fast tracks turnouts and get the cost down even more. So that's good. And these ones all are getting the wood PC board ties, so these are the more expensive version that will have his uh, laser cut PC board ties on them. So I had a couple of new locomotives showed up here about a week ago. These are the new Rapido Trains uh, GMD1s with the, I can think they call them the rebuilds. This is the uh, SKU number. So these are the later, the kind of the modern era, era GMD1s. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, I haven't done anything with them besides take them out of the box and admire them. I haven't even uh, got them on the programming track. So as soon as I uh, get them on the programming track and can give them a number, I think I'll do a review and test because these are the first GMD ones that I've owned. So I've never really had the chance to uh, test the pulling power or anything. So I'm a little curious to see what they can do and what they sound like. They they look amazing. I mean, these are great looking models. I can't wait to see these things uh, pulling a train. Yeah, f fantastic looking models. I always really like the look of these rebuilt GMD ones with the stripes. And they got the different variations. This is so cool. Like the they got the gold inserts uh, inside the road number on this 1402, which is different than the other one I got, which is just the plain white road number. So really, really cool. Um, so stay tuned, I'll get that, uh, as time permits, I'll get a review and test of these rebuilt uh, GMD1s by Rapido Trains Inc. So that'll wrap up this uh, layout update, guys. 
over the next month. I don't know how much time I'll spend down here. We're deep into the summer months here up in Canada, so probably won't get a whole lot done, but uh, I'm going to chip away at getting the tortoise motors installed on these uh, turnouts for this staging loop. And then uh, I've drilled the holes. I still have to do all the feeder wires and everything and get the each each track has to have its own individual basically wiring coming from the booster so that will take a little bit of time to uh, figure out the wiring for this thing so quite a bit of feeders to do so that'll be just probably what I do on the rainy days down here so that's my plan for the upcoming month hope you guys enjoyed the video as always thanks a lot for watching we'll see you next time